S Corporation Tax General Concepts Problem 2. On January 1st, Lemon and Lime own equally all the stock of an electing S Corporation called Citrus Corporation. The entity incurs a $60,000 loss for a non-leap year. On the 200th day of the year, Lemon sells her one half of the stock to her son Meyer. How much of the $60,000 loss, if any, is allocated to Lemon? So this question is actually really simple. It's a very simple question, but it's very, very, very important. And it's another one of the things where we stress the distinctions between S corporations and partnerships. So this is just asking how much of the $60,000 of loss, if any, is allocated to Lemon. And we're told that Lemon basically sells her one half of um, her one half ownership in the stock, which, by the way, further elaborating on that, we're told Lemon and Lime equally own all of the stock at the beginning of the year, and Lemon sells her one half of the stock. So she's not selling one half of her one half. She's selling all of her one half of the stock to Meyer. So basically at that point, Lemon no longer owns stock. If you want to draw it out in a timeline, you can think of it like this. Here, let's draw a little timeline. And the idea here is here's January 1st, and let's assume it's a calendar year. It doesn't make a difference whether or not it's calendar year because I'm going to show you how we calculate this. Let's just assume it's a calendar year, January 1st to December 31st. And the idea here is on January 1st, we have two owners. We have Lemon and Lime, and they own the stock equally. We're told on the 200th day of the year, so that is uh, more than halfway through, um, 200th day of the year, basically we now have Meyer and Lime. Lemon is now sold the interest to Meyer. Lemon no longer owns an interest. Meyer owns one half, Lime owns one half. So that's really what's going on in this problem, just so you understand. And we're just asked, how much of the $60,000 loss during this year, and by the way, it's a non-leap year, and I'll explain why it's important in a moment, um, even though if you're taking my class, I mean, if I was a professor, I would just, you know, for your professor teaching a class, I just focus on regular non-leap years. But some teachers are a little bit even, you know, more complex, you know, and they might give you, oh, a leap year, and what do you do there? I'll just explain to you. But again, if you're taking my class or, you know, I would say most teachers probably do a normal 365-day year, not a leap year. Um, I, I just obviously kept that in there to make it um, – to, to make sure that I was full in my in my providing information to you. Because, um, again, it does make a difference in tax and leap years. So all we're doing is we're just, the, cor the corporation, as corporation, it has $60,000 of loss during the year. And we just want to know, Lemon, well, how do we allocate that? Now, S corporations, again, the S stands for small business. I know I've talked about this already, and I also like to think of the S as simple. There's just simple rules, and one of the simple rules is unlike partnerships, S corporations, we allocate always the same way based on ownership. So S corporations, again, simple, right? Simple small businesses. Think of the S, simple small business. S corporation, we always are going to allocate based on ownership percentage. And that's the only thing. We can't allocate differently. Partnerships, on the other hand, partnership, any entity tax as a partnership under the federal tax law, there's tremendous flexibility. You can do all sorts of crazy things, all sorts of crazy things. That's one benefit of being a part of being a partnership. Also, it can be a burden as well because you need to hire a CPA or accountant or attorney when things get kind of challenging to do your taxes. As corporation, I mean, a lot of people still hire CPAs, attorneys, enrolled agents, tax professionals to calculate it, but it's, it's really simple to explain. There's not many difficult, complex areas. This is an S corporation. We're told S corporation, Citrus corporation, so it's an S corporation. The way we calculate is always going to be the same. We take the income or loss amount, we multiply it by the ownership percentage, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take the number of days that person owned it. So if they owned it the whole year, you would take 365 days over 365 if it's a normal year. If it's a leap year, you do 366. That's basically the difference. And in this problem, I actually told you on the 200th day, I could have told you a specific date and you'd have to count all those days, which you'd be like, wow, you know, he's making it really challenging for me, right? Especially if I give you something in the middle because you'd have to like count one way or the other and it'd still take you a long time. I'm not going to do that. I give you the specific date. I say on the 200th day of the year, what what do we do? So the loss here of a $60,000 loss, we're going to multiply that by the percentage. Now, again, look at our timeline. Lemon owned 50% from January 1st to the 200th day of the year. So it's going to be 
again, because we're doing this for lemon, lemon share. That's all we care about. I could also show you how to do lime and mire as well. So we do 50%, and then we're going to take over 200 over 365. And that gives us, for lemon, the share of loss, of the $60,000 loss that goes to lemon, it equals $16,438 of loss, of loss to lemon. Now, if we're calculating Meyer, if we're calculating Meyer's amount, we would take the $60,000 loss, and I'm not going to do the calculation, but I'll set it up for you. We multiply it by 50% because Meyer owned 50% starting on the 200th day and going forward, and we take 365 minus 200, which is 165, and we divide that by, by 365, and you get the amount of loss that be allocated to Meyer. For Lime, Lime is the easiest. Lime is the easiest because you just take $60,000 of loss, multiply by 50%, and we're going to we're going to times that by 365 over 365, which that equals 1, so it's just $30,000 loss. Technically, we could figure this out. It's just going to be the remaining amount of loss that goes to Meyer would just be 30,000 minus 16,438 that went to Lemon, and that would give you the amount for liar. You, or I'm sorry, liar. Meyer, you could calculate that if you want as well. The idea here is it's simple. Calculating income and loss allocations are very simple. Now, one thing, if the ownership changes, like let's say that you know Lemon sold um, a portion of the stock to Meyer, right? And you would have that. You basically would do two separate calculations. You would do one calculation for the first 200 days based on the percentage, and then you would do, and you would add to it another another same setup of calculation, but you do the percentage and you do the remaining days. So if I told you that um, Lemon sold 10% um, of the ownership of the stock to Meyer on the 200th day of the year, you would do um, 60,000 times 50% times 200 over 365, which you get 16,438 loss to lemon, plus, and you would do another one of these calculations, 60,000 times 40% times 165 over 365, and you would get that, and you would add it to the 16,438, and you would get the total loss. For Meyer, it would be 60,000 loss times 40%, I'm sorry, times 10%, my apologies, times 10% times 165 over 365, and you get the amount for um, for Meyer for the year, and then Lime would be the same. So that's all you do, and it's really simple. But again, partnership allocations are can be one of the most difficult topics in the entire tax law. I have classes devoted to allocations. I even showed you in one of the general concepts, partnership problems, an anti-abuse rule um, about how to do special allocations when you sell things where you have pre-contribution gain, it gets much more challenging and it's not even concrete. There's a lot of stuff that's just like up in the air, very open-ended. You're not, you're not even sure. We have some we have some guidance, but not even 100% sure under the tax law. And it's really, it, it makes partnership really challenging, partnership tax really challenging, but also kind of interesting. And, you know, it provides for a profession uh, for CPAs and attorneys. I mean, again, you hear a lot of times, you know, the tax law is, is convoluted and it shouldn't be. And um, yeah, it, it, it gets that way. Really, though, it comes down to just anti-abuse. People um, doing things in the past where Congress has to like close loopholes or IRS has to cl close loopholes. So that's really all I wanted to explain with this question. Again, go forth. Make sure you go over this. If you understand the calculation, the examples I told you, you're really good for anything you can see in practice. And for those of you out there, entrepreneurs, you now can understand how you're allocated your income and loss under an S-corporation.